Hey, you Mavericks, this is Kathy Wells, your Chief Inspiration Maverick, and I'm here with Francis Lagasse, our Chief Curiosity Maverick, who's running the show today. So he's our behind yeah. the scenes guy. Yeah. <laughs> and we are so excited to be here with Jill Vitale Awesome, who this is the third time now on one of our shows to talk about some of the issues that we're all experiencing with COVID-19. So welcome, Jill. Thank you, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, we're we're um, excited to talk about this in a you know in that way where we have an opportunity. We all have an opportunity here to make a difference, and I want to um, share something that if you don't follow Seth Godin's blog, um, you might want to think about it. He's really pretty interesting and amazing, and he wrote something just a few days ago in his blog that I want to I want to share. Um, that's really apropos to what we're doing right now. You have a chance to reinvent the default to make it better, or we can maintain the status quo. Which way will you contribute? Rather than doing what we've always done, what if we did something better instead? And, and I just wanted to share that with our audience here because we have an opportunity to not go back to status quo. We're all learning so much. We're learning so much about ourselves individually right, about how our teams operate under pressure, how the world operates and communicates and comes together during this time. And we're finding some amazing bright spots too. So with that, um, I will uh, turn it over to you, Jill. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you guys are experiencing there at the Eden Alternative. Sure, so the Eden Alternative, so we work with organizations around the world. You know, a lot of nursing homes, assisted living communities, senior living uh, communities, home care companies. And so it's really kind of interesting as we're talking with people, you know, in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. Of, of what's going on and how things are happening at the communities. And one of the things, and in people's homes too, um, you know, one of the things that's, that's really kind of interesting, and I don't know if people outside the field all really know kind of what's going on and that is um, especially in nursing homes with the the cms guidelines around this pandemic that um, no visitors are allowed in communities um, other than medically necessary visits and the staff um, and a lot of nursing home or assisted living communities are doing the same thing and also some independent living communities so you know with the people being so at risk in these communities um, all visits are being cut off and, and you know, the, the normal kind of life of being with your family and having all these visitors is changing. And then recently, at least it, with nursing homes, you know, there's new guidance that came out um, over the weekend that you can't have communal dining anymore um, or programs. And so, you know, what's already um, a, a challenging thing, especially, you know, running nursing homes, um, also very um, wonderful too, but it's it's already a challenging job. But these organizations and these leaders and these people that work in these communities are under intense pressure, right? They are truly at the front lines of protecting the people that we all know are, are the most at risk. And what's kind of interesting is, you know, is thinking about the Eden Alternative for 25 years has been really looking at and teaching about the impact of loneliness, helplessness, and boredom on us, especially as we get older. And so right now, this is where elders are most at risk, right? And we know we know we need to protect people from this virus. And, and so these, these medical interventions are necessary, but loneliness and helplessness and boredom also impact people's health. Right. And we know all the research around isolation and what that does to people. So so it's a really kind of an, an interesting time. Um, and, you know, I do I do want to give a shout out to the people that are working in these communities um, and how they are sticking with the, you know, what they do and, and the passion and going to work every day when the rest of us are like, I'm so sad I have to stay home. It's like we don't have much to complain about, right? These, these folks are out there doing this work every day. So, so that's kind of where things are. And depending on, you know, what country people are in, they're at different levels of how much people have to be isolated. It's kind of, you know, based on how, um, how much the virus has spread in these different regions. Um, 
Right. Yeah, and I, I want to touch on what you were talking about with the staff and, and how hard this is. I heard from a friend of mine who has a, an HR friend who works at a, an assisted living and they had no staff. So she had to get on the front lines and do hands on care, which she's not trained to do. Um, she's a bright lady. She knows how to do it. She did a great job, but it's it's the the willingness to dive in, but also being a little afraid, like, I don't know how to do this. Am I going to do this well? Um, you know, I think everybody's being stretched. And, you know, the other great thing we're hearing from the organizations we work with is how their teams have stepped up. It is not just the leaders getting in there and doing things they're not comfortable with. It's people who usually do sales and marketing who are now, okay, how do I um, how do I engage every, you know, with, with the elders every day so that they're not lonely? Um, it's, I mean, people, it, it's really, really challenging. And um, I think that the organizations that have already, you know, kind of have these empowered cultures and had, had a good baseline are faring better than yeah. ones where there was already a lot of upheaval, where there's trust, you know, and where there's optimism, um, and where people already know how to work together. That's my take on it from talking with people. Those those communities are are, are going through this in a little bit of an easier way, not that it's easy for anyone. Yeah, and Jill, I think this really goes to show you how much long-term residences are part of healthcare. I think that was often overlooked that it's just a place that you go, oh, you go, you know, when you're older, it's, it's fun. Yeah. But it's now showing that you might not, you might not, you might be a home health aide. So you might not technically have a, a nursing degree, but by golly, you are healthcare and yeah. you are bending over backwards to keep not only yourself healthy, your family healthy, but also your residents who matter. The amount of love that I think someone that provides care has for our residents will never fully be comprehended. Right. But the self sacrifices of being extra vigilant about what you do outside of the facility or the residence, I should say, really matters. It, it, it does. It, it absolutely does. And, you know, another kind of a, a, a really interesting thing is how do we frame this? Yeah. Okay. We had a call last week with people from all over the world and Dr. Bill Thomas um, and his wife and Jude, who are the founders of the Eden Alternative, were there. And they, you know, they were really talking about and it really hit me um, that you know, the people that live in our communities that have lived a lot longer than us, they've been through tough times. And are we are we looking at people as and yes, it's our job to, you know, make sure we're doing all the right things to protect people's health. But are we calling upon the wisdom of the mm -hmm. people that we are supporting to help us get through this, right? Because who, I don't know how to go through a devastating time in our society because I haven't lived through it, but you know, it's with some exceptions, of course, but, but the elders have. And so are we calling upon the wisdom of the people that live in our communities and that, that we're supporting in their homes to help us because they, we need their help right now more than ever. We need their wisdom. And then the other thing is, you know, how can the people that we, when we were on this call, well, there was a gentleman that lives in a CCRC and he was like, you know, I have a role to play. I am teaching all the other residents how to use Zoom so that we can stay mm. connected. There's cool. all these untapped resources of people and it's not happening in all these communities, right? But I think there are some because when, when there's a crisis, we go back to the medical model and we go back to paternalism and you know uh, there are people there that could be helping uh, i don't know write letters or call people who are living in their homes who are isolated we need to say how do we want to be of service to this world you know when i've come on your show before we've talked about that about citizenship yep, yep. not customers yeah citizens have a role to play and if we can work with people and figure out how do how are we all in this together and what role each individual, no matter what abilities they may be living with, what role everybody can play. We also know that purpose has a major impact on our health, right? Yes. Connections with people. So how do we pull that all together? And yes, take care of people, but not put people in this victim. We don't have to always go to that place. And it's, sometimes it's just a, hey, wait a minute. 
are we overlooking some things here? And I just think that was such a huge takeaway I had from that conversation last Friday that was really impactful for me. And I think that ties in. Wayne Langley just asked a question. Uh, he wants to know, I'll put, up, I'll put it up on the screen here. He really wants to know, how could a strong culture create a strong environment in which challenges like we face due to COVID-19 are more effectively managed? Wayne, thanks for that comment. And Jill, obviously any insight would be fantastic. Thanks for asking that question, Wayne. So I, I can tell you what we're hearing from the communities that have done, right? Um, have they have this strong culture? that they are able to maneuver through this in a better way, right? There's trust to be able to say, what if we try this? Um, and team members, you know, empowered teams, which is what we teach all the time, they are working in neighborhoods and they're already used to figuring things out on their own. And so they're figuring out, like there are communities that are part of our registry where they're like, just because we can't have... Um, group gathering is everybody together doesn't mean we have to stop everything and everybody goes in their room. Everybody. So it's kind of interesting, right? It's, it's um, everybody sitting in their doorway of their room. And so they're yeah. properly socially, you know, that social distance, the distance right. yeah. they're still doing stuff together, you know? And, and I just think when you have that strong culture that Wayne talked about um, mm -hmm. and you're thinking in that way of, what wisdom do the, do, do the elders bring? How do we work through this together rather than everything is about the medical model? We mm -hmm. are seeing those organizations are saying, we're okay. And they're actually residents um, who are saying, you know what, we're, we're okay. We get this and we understand why this has to happen right now. And actually one of the registry homes um, mentioned today to one of my team members, that the elders there are saying, you know what, I, I, this actually feels more like home now because we don't have all these people in and out and all these people coming in and doing all these things and you know all of these extra people in the building and it, it, there's a piece and I feel more of, of this family kind of connection within the home while of course they miss their own family members. Yeah. So, you know, it's... it's it's That's a, interesting. Yeah, That's a really interesting response. And there's something in there that we can learn from. I don't yeah. know what it is yet, but there's something in there. I, 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 what it taught me is not to assume, right? And so when you actually ask people and talk about what, why, you know, what's happening is I was assuming this was, you know, just this horrible situation for every person living there. And of course it's not ideal, but when you ask the questions, it's not always what you assume. Yeah. Well, and does it go to show you too that that our our residents are capable of more? That we make these assumptions that because someone is diagnosed with X, Y, Z, whatever it is, that's what they're that's how we define them. And I think we have to get past that mm -hmm. and realize it's a person first living with whatever, right? Whatever, yeah. living with getting older, living with whatever cancer, yeah. COVID. And we've got to, like you said, lean on them to get their input. And, you know, we've been struggling with our families and in, in the, the virtual visits and things like that. So I've put it to our families, say, hey, I want to be creative. Let me know how you want to throw me ideas that you think yeah. could work. Because I don't want to be the only one solving this. I want your collaboration on it. And, I'm, and that's how I think we need to start looking. This is a collaborative solution that we're working on. Well, and if you, you know, you talked about kind of a reset at the beginning, Catherine, and I think that that is such an important thing because what we are forced to do right now is we are forced to be community. Yes. And, and guess what? Francis doesn't have all the answers because this is a really challenging time. Francis yeah. needs the power of community and the family members and the residents that live in your community to come together and figure out how do we get through this together. Yes. That's how... I think that's what we should be doing anyway. So maybe we're learning some really, really valuable lessons that the formal leaders don't have to figure everything out, don't have to make all the rules and the decisions. You know, a lot of the cool things that we're seeing, even, you know, in a normal time, you'd be like, this is sad, but you see family members parking their lawn chair outside of the, the their family member's room and they're on the phone and they're looking at each other. That's so great. And that's that spontaneous, like, let's figure out how to make this work. And we don't have to figure everything out. Like, we have all these resources. Yeah, we don't have to know everything. Yeah. yeah. 
And I would say that there's something to learn from the comment that the resident gave you that um, it feels more like home right now because it, it's a tighter community. There's it's not open doors with people coming in and out. So yeah. I find that comment very interesting. It, it is. And I don't know. That was one community. You yeah. know, that's what they're finding. But yeah, it's it's more peaceful here and it feels more like home. And and it's really interesting. But Joe, does that play in what the Eden philosophy has always been though, right? These yeah. smaller communities that that could have multiple 12, 15, 16 beds on a single campus that you might have four of those houses, but it actually feels like a home, you know, yeah. because it's, it's a more intimate environment without the hustle. And bu I don't want to say hustle and bustle, but. I, I think that's definitely, you know, some of a lot of the findings were there, but you can also create home in a community in a, in a, oh, in a larger building too. R right. But, right. You know, it's, it's, we're going to learn a lot from this. Yeah. Yeah. And the collaboration and being care partners with each other is truly, truly key yeah. to how well we weather this. Um, we're, we'll ha we have a Facebook Live next Wednesday with a gentleman from Asbury Communities talking about how they're specifically collaborating and yeah. um, and what they're doing from that perspective. Yeah, so that's that's kind of an interesting thing. And as you say, um, that they happen to be one of those that already had these things in place, so it's easier mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that. That is going to, I think that that's going to be a sea change in senior care that we're going to start having more focus on the culture and having some of these things in place. And I mean, how do you plan for something like this? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know. You can plan for a fire, you can plan for an earthquake, but it's, it's pretty hard to plan for something like this. But when you have the right culture and you are focused on each person and you're focused on relationships and you're focused on empowerment, that is laying the foundation to be able to weather those storms, right? And like the under it is. I thought this was going to happen. And um, I got to I got to interrupt and bring this comment up here from Ryan. Oh, it's Ryan. So Rain is in South Africa. Rain. He's an alternative coordinator in yeah. South Africa. Hi, Rain. Hello. So Rain, um, thanks for joining us. But this really is 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 a really interesting comment. Isolation is nothing new to most elders. We have now made it a thing. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. That, it, it, and Rain, you're right. It, it's why did it take something like this to bring it to the forefront? Well, and Rain wrote a really um, good Facebook post on that, so I'll connect you with you all, and maybe you can share that in the. In yeah, the comments, comments. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Rain, Rain wrote, he wrote a really good post yesterday just about that. That's wonderful. And I have heard people talking about the fact that our, our seniors in most senior care communities, I can't say most, I don't know, in senior care communities, many of them are isolated or feeling isolated, even if we're not doing that to them. Mm -hmm. And, and now we're just, we're, you know, some of us are experiencing it ourselves. I have my kids here not leaving the house and they're like, oh, I feel so disconnected. Yeah. You, you know, I think that's the other huge aha moment I've had. And I was reading Rain's um, post that he did. And I was reading this article um, in Forbes magazine. And the title of it was something like, um, now we all understand what it's like to be older and isolated. But I, you really start thinking about it. And, and I think for the people who are watching this, this, is, this period of time is an unbelievable opportunity to start to understand some things. So if it, I want to kind of run through some of those, if that's okay. Please do. Yeah, please. Let's go. So here, and this, it really, it's, it's what we do with the Eden Alternative. And we do this exercise with people in some of our classes where we give them um, index cards and they write down all the things that are important to them. And then we take them away. And they're like, no, don't take away that from me. Well, we're all living a vi the, the live version of that right now. OK, so here's what I would ask, you know, uh, some things that we can think about. Right. Is how does it feel like suddenly our, our lives have changed? I mean, within the last, I don't know, week, yeah. week, 10 days at most. Yeah. I mean, and that is very similar to what happens to people when they move into a long term. Mm. Right. So think about that. OK. 
think about the fact that how everything right now is focused on your physical health. Everything's about the medical framework. What do you need to do to make sure your, your, your immune system is good? And my husband has the sniffles and I'm like, take your temperature, take your temperature. What are your vital signs? You know what I mean? He's like, Can you get away from me. But that's the way people live in, um, in, in an institutional environment that's very focused on the medical model. So, so there's that. There's how does it, we're all experiencing loneliness right now, or a lot of us are. You know, so how does it feel to be cut off from the rest of the world? Yeah. Right. And how are a lot of us pushing back against that? I'm really trying hard to call people instead of texting people and actually have some interactions with people. We see people fighting back against the loneliness by ignoring all the things that the healthcare people say we should do, which is stay home. And we're, people are still going out. Right. So it, it's everything we can do to avoid that loneliness, which is when you want companionship and you can't have it, which is the situation a lot of us you know, are really in right now. And our worlds and Dr. Thomas has always talked about this as we age, our worlds shrink. And right now, our worlds, for those of us who you know, don't have to go to a job right now, they've shrunk to our four walls of our house. And That's how powerful, that yeah. Feel, right? So it's it's really um, interesting with that. And then you think about helplessness, right? So how does it feel to lose your purpose? So a lot of people are losing their jobs right now. They're like, I don't. what am I supposed to do? Yeah. There are a lot of people right now, I see this all the time on, on social media, people are looking for opportunities for purpose to give back because there's great pain in only having people take care of you and not being able to give you know, something back to the world. And you're also losing, con we've lost control over our environment, right? Just like you do if you move into an institution. Mm -hmm. And here's something really interesting I was thinking about. Um, we've lost control over our environment. And what are people doing? They're hoarding food. They're doing all these things to try to regain control over their lives, which Something. is what we see so often in an uh -huh. institution, right? Yeah, that's wow. It's it, it, it. This is, and we have people wandering. We could call this wandering. You're supposed to stay at home. Well, I'm not really going to. I'm good. You know, it, all these things that we call behaviors. We, we're <laughs> doing right now, right? If the medical professionals are saying don't do this, and people are doing it anyway. You know, and then then, you know, it's also how does it feel to have other people making decisions about your well-being? And I, for one, am very glad the government is making decisions about our well-being right now. But how does that really feel? And that's how it feels in a nursing home where somebody sometimes it's a faceless, nameless person that you don't even know is making decisions about how you should live your life to be well. Let's back up real quick and, and talk about that contradicting the medical professionals because I find that pretty interesting for the sense that the behaviors, you're right, the behaviors being exhibited right now by those that are supposed to self-quarantine or social distance, they're ignoring that. Mm -hmm. Just like we have, well, why... Why do you get up when I don't tell you to get up? Or why aren't you using your walker? Or why are you hoarding the food? Or why are you packing your bags? Is it, it, it's is a it, sense of control. Is it a, yeah, a sense of control. And is it a question of um, that, that really is important for everybody else but me? That's not me. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, it, you know, it's really, if you just, and I, that's why I think this is a time where we can, if we really take it in and we really reflect on this, we can learn so much because yeah. there's also, right? We talked about loneliness and the helplessness and the boredom, right? How does it feel to suddenly, uh, all the things that had meaning to you are taken away, right? There are a lot of people that are like, well, I can't go to church anymore. Yeah, I can watch it virtually, but it's not the same as being with people. Um, your book clubs, I mean, all of these, things are being taken away and you can't spontaneously run over to your neighbors anymore and knock on the door. So people are experiencing loneliness, helplessness, and boredom right now. And that's what people experience all the time in institutional settings. 
So my hope is that again, and some of this takes reflection and talking about things that we can learn something really valuable from this and take it forward to do better in the future. Yes. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk about that real quick, Joe. I mean, you, the Eden Alternative has been here for about 25 plus, 25 years, give or take, right? Yep. And this has been a consistent theme of, of using, uh, uh, you know, how you can highlight, you know, like this right here, how this can highlight the benefits of community living. As a family member, I'm so grateful that my parents live in a senior living community right now. So how can we take that and really amplify the benefits of it? Yeah, yeah, I, I think there's, this is my, this is my personal take on this is, you know, my parents live at a life plan community, a CCRC community. And yes, the dining room has shut down. And yes, they can't do all these big group things. And I'm, I'm happy about that. And, and they are too, they know it's the right decision. But I'm not, you know, what, I'm not worried about them because I know they have food. I know the people that run that community are doing all of the right things for infection control. I know if they get sick, there's someone there to support them. What I, what I would be much more worried and I am much more worried about people who are living alone in their homes without, now some people have all the appropriate and necessary support, but I worry about those people who are alone and are isolated. I saw a post from, somebody who said, you know, my parents live um, in another state. And she was asking people to please don't get grocery store delivery if you don't need it. Because she said, I'm trying to get d groceries delivered to my parents. And they said it's going to take six days. Oh, you know what I mean? So other than me running out and getting toilet paper for my parents, like I know everything's cool. And, and yeah. so, you know, it's, it, it, this community living and, and they're going to be figuring out even more. I know how do they have community, even though they're social or they're physically distancing. Um, but there's power in being in community for sure. Yeah. And that, that's a side effect that I hadn't thought about. And um, I think that's something really important for, for people in our audience to hear. Like if you don't have to do some of these things, if you can get out yourself, <clears throat> Please yeah. spare the the limited resources that are out there for yeah. people who can't get out. Right, right. So, and I think too is that I was talking with Catherine before the show here. Is common sense has to prevail again a little bit here in how we react and go back to being communal. I mean, just going to get eighty thousand toilet paper rolls or whatever. Come on, we're going to get forty pounds of meat. I mean. The average person needs to consume about 2,000 calories a day. Right. A two-week period, it's only 28,000 calories. Like, <laughs> I mean. But it really does go back to what we were talking about. When you lose control oh. over your environment in your life, people do things like that, you know? And it's, yeah, it's unnecessary. Do you think a lot of the behavior we're seeing is people trying to regain control? You know, I'm not a psychologist. Or Either am I. Either am I. That, but, you know, I, I I think so. This is a very uncertain time, and it's a very scary time. And, you know, it's how do I make sure I'm okay? Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm focusing more on what can we learn from what we're doing and we see other people doing and applying that because we are all living in that kind of reality that a lot of older people live in already right now. Mm -hmm. So. And that's a good point. I want to talk about, I think I remember we talked briefly that you did a FaceTime visit with a community yeah. in Australia this week. Could you share a little bit uh, on just how that happened and, and yeah. the things that are around that? It was, it was the highlight of my week, other than this, of course, because talking to you two is always a highlight. Uh, I, was, I was talking to um, the leader at this community where I had visited when I was in Australia this fall. Um, it's called Anamkara. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with the um, administrator there. She said, hey, let's just talk. And so we got on um, FaceTime and we were talking and I was like, oh, I'd really love to see the the residents there and your team. And she's like, well, let's go for a walk. And so we just walked and I was right there, right? We walked through the whole building where I was get, got to joke around with the residents and talk with the team and you know make some jokes one of the the residents there was like i know how you american girls are when <laughs> you coming to visit and we were just you know it, it didn't matter that we were thousands of miles apart and that's one of the things i've been talking to some there are a lot of leaders right now in our field like corporate leaders 
and they're, you know, they can't really go in their communities. They, right. They can't go community, community and spread things. And so I'm talking to them like, how, how do you use technology to just be a person, right. And visit with people and, and get some connections that way, because it truly, I mean, for me, it made me feel so connected to other people. And I know um, the community was really happy to talk with someone from so many miles away too. So that was really fun. And then the other thing it made me realize is, so my mom, and I, I had shared this with Catherine, my mom's turning 80 on Sunday and we were That's going right, I saw it, yeah. gathering. And, um, and then because of that situation where I got to interact with the, the folks mm -hmm. in Australia, I, I was talking to my sister and I'm like, let's have a virtual birthday party. Cause I'm not going, I'm not bringing anything into that community. So we're not going there, but we're getting um, I hope my mom's not watching this, but we're getting, so I'm not going to tell you who's going to be on, but um, we're getting um, all these people together to oh, have a awesome. party for her. And, you know, so there's something coming out of that, that there will be people that wouldn't have been able to be here in person, people she hasn't talked to in years. That's cool. And, and so it's kind of a fun thing, right? It's how do we use yeah. technology for meaningful yeah. because we yeah. can't all be in person but we can yeah. use technology. Yep. And, and I want to jump in. We got some really good questions coming here right cool. now. So uh, this is from Denise Hyde. Uh, we think we are so independent and yet look at how interdependent we are on each other just to get our basic daily needs met. How can we capitalize or uh, and celebrate our interdependence and the meaning it can bring oh. to life? Denise, this is cool. So yes, I know, love this. Uh, I'm so glad you. This is, it was uh, our community builder at the Eden Alternative. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. That's such a great. That is. I wish we could just pop her in here and have her just join the conversation. Yeah, <laughs> um, Denise has so much wisdom. But yeah, I, and that's one of the things that Dr. Thomas has has long talked about is none of us is really independent. Yeah. Right. Unless you like live off the grid and don't use anything from anybody else, you we are all interdependent and we all rely on each other. So how can we celebrate that, though? I mean, because uh, with the social distancing and some of those other things we're hearing from medical professionals, which I recommend we follow and listen to those people. But how can we celebrate that? Because I think we are more connected than at times we want to admit. I would love to have Denise put that in the comments and tell us her thoughts. Oh, good. Okay. But Denise, right, Denise. You, have, you have a challenge, Denise. And we have another question from Meg, Meg yep. Laporte. Yep. Oh, I'm going to put that up here right now. So uh, Jill, what have you heard from the other Eden homes about how they are contending with the pandemic? Well, there, well, it depends on what you're talking about with that, um, Meg. And, you know, it's, we're hearing from people, and, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, that the ones where there's like a great culture and people are empowered and there's a lot of trust, um, that people are getting through this in, in a little bit of a, a better way, right? And and um, there's a lot of specific things we could talk about, right? How people are addressing the, that, um, that schools are all closed, so how do they have their team members come to work? Um, when their kids are at home. So I was just talking with an organization yesterday where they are setting up a, a sitting service um, for all of the team members and they had to close their adult day. So those staff are doing babysitting and, you know, there's all this legal stuff around that, but, but it, people are figuring out all these um, different ways of doing things. And I would also point out um, tomorrow, Friday at 1230 Eastern time, we have our um, second uh, a virtual gathering where people are going to be sharing exactly some of those things. So I would encourage you and we can put that in the comments. Yeah. We will, I'm going to put a little note up here right now about it, but what time did you say again? Sorry for that, Jill. It's at uh, 1030 mountain time, 1230 Eastern. 1030. Time. That's and, so we're, great. and we're even going to have some, like the person I talked to uh, uh, talked about Sylvia from um, Australia mm -hmm. is going to be joining us and sharing some of the things they're doing. Um, so last week was very empowering, just having people together and knowing you're not alone. Yeah. And how would people get more? Will we have a link for them that they, they can click on or how can they get involved in that um, in, I, in that gathering? I bet Denise will put it in the comments, the link to register. 
We're Denise, just, you've got a little bit of pressure on you right now. Yeah, well, she responded, so <laughs> she, she has an answer. And All she right. says, I think we need to thank those that are stocking the grocery store shelves. Oh, you've got it there. Yep, Delivering I got it. The supplies, making face masks for the hospitals, taking care of the elders, homeschooling the kids, reaching out to neighbors and finding ways to help them if needed, doing those things instead of just ignoring all those who make the world go in the background. And I think that's it. We can only control so much in our lives, but what we can control is how much we can give and offer to other people during this time. Yeah. And, and maybe there are opportunities in communities. And I, I don't know if this is where Denise was going with this too, is, you know, if we talk to people, if we reframe things with the elders mm -hmm. who live in our communities, how, mm -hmm how can we give back to the world right now? It may be that somebody says, gosh, I'm really thinking about the, you know, the people that work at the grocery store, let's do something for them. Or we you know what I mean? It's, I think there are a lot of cool things that can, and then there are some really great things that are happening for sure. Well, and I got to share that great thing right now from Sylvia Hall, oh, having their first Skype session with our partner school. Yeah. That's Sylvia from Australia. Hi, Sylvia. Oh, hi, Sylvia. But that's really cool. Our first, Skype session with our partner school. So that's awesome. That's amazing, that's really Sylvia. Cool. And and not surprised if you're in Eden Alternative home. I'm not surprised to hear some of these amazing things. Um, and Denise did uh, post the link, so we yep. will make sure that we get that in the in the so comments. It is right there, and I will definitely get that. Um, you know, we'll maybe make another headline for that. We'll make another post for that as well too to highlight that link as well. Uh, we want to get back here real quick. We have another comment question from Meg Laporte. Um, she wants to know about um, celebrations and overcoming challenges. Is that what Denise was saying? Is that, I, I wonder if that's what she's asking about. In yeah, so I think what I'm understanding is that she's curious about how we can have these celebrations and overcome these challenges. Um, even in this time of, of social distancing. Yeah, I, I would love to hear from anybody who's out there watching this to put some stuff in the chat box because that's where Please. the yeah. yeah. And I do think that was part of what Denise was doing, sharing some of those ways that we can celebrate and really be interdependent in a wonderful way. And this is more support for what you guys are doing, uh, Jill, is from Christine, uh, of creatively seeking the new and next right answers to be connected that's a great way to put it i have and I kind of go ahead Catherine. she also posts a little bit further down that one organization has irish dancers out front <laughs> oh that's so cool well you know and there was another one of the registry homes claremont park which is here in denver there was a, a post they did where their their nursing home administrator was um, uh, playing music, he's a musician, was playing for it. So even though everybody's in the room, this beautiful music is going through the hallways. And that was his right, right? He's bringing his passion to work. Yeah. And that's where a lot of this can come from too, is we have gifts that the team members that work in our communities have beyond what their tasks are at work. Yeah. Right? Um, and Meg, if you had any other thoughts um, on what you're seeing, I'd love to hear more from you too. And Christina, I like the birthday parties through the window. Yeah, there, that one right there. there we go. So yeah. we could use some cake over here too. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, this is a good one. I like this one here. Nicolette McDermott, thank you for joining. Has anyone thought about courting a virtual memory cafe? That's Ooh. great. That's yeah. a really cool. You know, so Dementia Action Alliance, and I okay. don't know the dates of this, but they're doing they're doing virtual gatherings, and Dementia Action Alliance is um, it, it's they say powered you know powered by people I think is their tagline, but it's individuals who are living with dementia, and right. they're facilitating some discussions, virtual discussions with other individuals who are living with dementia. Is that Lori Le? LeBay, does she do something? Is that with Lori LeBay? Because I've saw her do a few things like that as well, too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know okay. who's, who's doing that. But if, you know, daanow.org is the website, and I'm sure they have the information on their website. And, and we'll share that information as well, too, since there's a lot of great content coming out from our discussion. We'll definitely make sure we get that out. Meg came back. She she helped. She, she liked, I like this a lot. Oh, yes. 
the writing camp, creative writing, creating letter writing campaigns. Yeah, yeah. and Time Slips is a great mm -hmm. organization that is is uh, initiating that, and we could also get their uh, website uh, in the comments too. I love all these resources. Yeah, that are these are great, Meg. Yeah, keep them coming. This is actually helpful, and we're trying to get as I'm trying to keep up with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coming. This is another great one coming up here. Um. Yes. Yeah, it's important to be careful yeah. with that entertainment. And we talked about that in our last podcast with you, mm -hmm. that we don't want to become entertainment heavy. We're not Disney. We're right. as senior living community, but it has a place. It, it It's like when you go on vacation, you go on vacation to get a break, to get a little mental, we used to call them mental margaritas, <laughs> a little get away from reality. And that's what entertainment should be is part of that get away from reality, but not not sticking the TV in front of the toddler. Um, right. And, 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 you know, I think with what Rain said about, you know, um, there is a place for it. Right. But getting involved in the actual management of the home, cooking, cleaning, caring for others. So that's where rather than the formal leaders of a community saying how this is how we're going to get through this. It's how it's, it's working together, including the elders. This is our situation. How are we going to get through this together? You know, and, and, and again, that can teach us things when this crisis has passed yeah. that will shift things. Right. Because rain's right. Like passive entertainment is not the way to go. No, not at all. And I think too is uh, it's coming up with with it's using where we are right now and keep pushing the creativity that can occur from this. Because you know, as an entrepreneur, as Catherine is, and we talk about this, necessity is the mother of all invention. Yeah. And I'm hoping we'll see some some new ways or or maybe different, not new, but different approaches to how we can better just engage overall. Yeah. With yeah. our older adults. Yeah, and just new thinking about this. And and I just, if we just kind of recap some of the things we talked about, we, we talked about how what we're experiencing today is what our older adults experience when we put them, I, I don't even, when they oh. transition into a, a, a community. Yeah. Even with my father, we did everything we could to make it as simple and s seamless as possible. But you just watch someone really go downhill a little bit, um, not because of the care that they're receiving, but because their world has just has just gone from this big mm -hmm. to this big. And there's very little you can do about it um, if that's their mindset, if that's their mindset. And a lot has to do with the, the culture of the community in which someone lives, right? With what Rain's talking about, we talked about on our the show before, you know, is a community where people have a role to play, you know what I mean? And 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 you're a citizen, not a helpless consumer. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, you know? And Rain just put another comment up. I'm yeah. just yeah. on your show now. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> no, this is fun. I love it. This is, uh, this is collaborate. You know, we've talked about it. This is how we collaborate. We're getting people from literally across the world, sharing ideas of how we get through this together. Yeah. Um, but that's interesting. Risk averse communities. Yeah. It I, I think what Rain's getting at is the whole notion of um surplus safety, right? You guys should have mm. you should have Rain on your show sometime. I think we're gonna have to because I want to dive deeper into that risk averse community. Yeah. That's a right. that's a topic I think that if we're essentially safety proofing everything, mm -hmm. how do you have any freedom? Right, right. Yeah, it's like, you know, you talk about you bubble wrap people up in safety and you suffocate mm -hmm. people because risk is part of life. But that's a whole nother discussion. And I really would encourage you to yeah. connect with Rain. We'll, we'll have to connect with Rain because this is uh, yeah. that's a topic that I think if we want to truly challenge how we're aging. We need to figure out that balance between independence, freedom and safety. And this goes also to one of the chapters in, in your book about helicopter Adult child parenting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> helicopter daughter, that's me. That's, that's what, yeah, yeah. I, I certainly uh, helicopter parented my own child. Uh, uh, um, as I look back, I can see I did that. And I also did it to my father. And yeah. I did not serve 
either of them well in that respect, but um, not, not, but that's just what happened. And I think learning from that and looking at in this situation, it would be really easy for family to start helicoptering. Yeah. And, and what I love is what we're talking about a little bit is um, for family, if, if we can trust that our older adults can handle some of this and that they're in good care, let them surprise us. Let yeah. them show us. Well, well, and I think it's also, you know, I, I think you're totally right. And we limit we limit people because we're afraid something bad's going to happen. And I think, you know, we're seeing even a little bit of that. So right now, and I am not saying what's happening right now is not necessary because I'm trusting the health professionals. But right. you know, this also happens, this medical model and keeping people safe undermines well-being for people right and again this i'm not questioning what decisions are being made because i this is what right. I'm needs to happen but there are things where you get into this like <gasps> like we had a community um that was asking some things and saying well you know the resident can't go outside and and denise because we're you know we're keeping everybody apart and, De and denise who was just commenting is like people can still go outside you know just right. They're away from other people. Like being outside is probably one of the best things right now. Yes, absolutely. Because we're having a snowstorm in Denver, but right. you know, we we kind of shut down and we're like, uh, we have to do all these things to keep people safe, but then we impact joy and we impact autonomy and we impact all the the eating alternative, what we call the domains of well being, which impacts our health too. You know, it's it, it have rain on the show. He will do a good job talking about this. Yeah, and I think as Kristen says, Christine says here, we definitely swing the pendulum too far, right? We 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 panic, and and you're right, Christine, that we need to find that balancing act because yeah. I think honestly, it, it, me personally, you know, the negativity of the news and the cycles and all that stuff, it can wear on you. I mean, and and now you're isolated, you're you're not sure what's happening. Think of how that compounds. I mean. And, and, you know, and I can kind of see light at the end of the tunnel, but still, we need to find ways to keep that positivity up for how we are engaging with each other, even in a distance. Yeah, I think we're seeing we're seeing a lot of communities we work with being like, we're figuring this out. And they're like proud of what everybody's doing to work together, you know, and, mm -hmm. and again, you know what's happening right now um yeah it's undermining people's well-being but again i i just want to make it clear like the the medical experts know what needs to happen at this point in time but we yeah. do this we do this all the time with, with people yeah like and i think preparedness over panic as much as we can and also um you know if you have a little panic moment i think that's okay the world has changed a lot it's how much do you feed it and yeah. you, we all know what we feed grows. And it there are plenty of people who are not panicked and there are plenty of people who are panicked and just trying to find our own equilibrium and do the very best we can all do as human beings in this uncharted territory. And call upon the people that have had more experience with this, not this specific situation. I love that. But I actually, there are days where I'm like, I wish I was still working at a community because I know that the people that lived in the community would be able to help me see things in a different way, you know, because they've lived longer. Yeah. Last, uh, earlier this week, we did a Facebook Live with Laura Wilkerson, who's a nurse practitioner in Michigan. And she is working on some sort of a donation thing where people can drop off at a donation box uh, items for senior care centers. So while we're on live, I just want to ask people if you have things that you would that you need or would be helpful. Um, she was thinking things like coloring books or puzzles or things that will help people pass the time books um, that might challenge the brain a little bit. I don't know what those items are. So we're asking you what would be helpful to your community and how can we come together and support you in that? So Definitely we are almost at an it. hour here. This is yeah. <laughs> been a long time.
<laughs> wow. So, um, um, Jill, I want to ask you one question to kind of wrap up here. And I didn't prep you for this one. So <laughs> just a question that I'm thinking about. What do we, what would you want the world to look like 12 months from now that's different from today? And I know there's a gazillion things. So just pick like one thing you would like people to, to maybe learn through this process. You in our field or in general? Let's I, do both. Let's yeah. do one in our field yeah. and one in yeah. general since you, since you brought it up. So. Um, so I would love to see in our field, um, a focus on community and citizenship and everybody having a role to play it, because we are being forced to do that right now. So carrying that forward, well, it, it, figuring out how we do better with that now and carrying that forward and really disrupting that whole, you're older, you're a customer, come here and we'll do everything for you. We all need each other. So that is one thing I would love to see. And you know, it's the same thing. I actually, I think it's the same thing for all of us in general is how much we need each other. And it goes back to what Denise said, Denise said about interdependence and, and, you know, this whole notion that we're independent and we don't need anyone is already just it false, but really starting to be able to celebrate that and, and work together on things. That's yeah, beautiful. That's and I just want to say to everybody that's been engaged, this is really cool. The kind of the one thing that Catherine and I started this whole thing for was to give a platform for us to share ways we can improve how we take care of those that are aging. And I just want to say a big thank you to all those that have watched and put comments in because this is how we should be doing it. It shouldn't be competition. It should be collaboration because hopefully we all will be honored with able to age. We, we definitely hope to create a lot more collaboration and, and we have choice here. So let's step into oh, it. Oh my, I got to share this one. This is a really good one from Meredith. Sorry, I was gonna, trying to end it, but this is too good not to share. Um, and us and them. Yeah. That, that I think sums it up right there about what you've been talking about, Jill, is how do we make it that we are in this together, whether you're two years old or 92 years old. We yeah. can learn from each other. Absolutely. And so as always, Jill, I want to say a huge thank you for taking some time out during this uh, probably pretty busy, stressful time for you. And uh, we really appreciate, you know, the time that you have taken this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who was participating and shooting out comments and ideas. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. We so appreciate it. You're the you're what helps make this happen out in the world. So thank you so much. Have a great and, day, everyone. And uh, try to stay tuned to see um, the links for tomorrow, the Eden Alternative. Again, I want to remind everybody the gathering at 1030 Mountain Time, 1230 Eastern. We'll put all that in the comment section and make a couple additional posts as well, too, so that people can find those links. All, all right. right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And for those in Denver, stay warm. Stay warm and be well. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Yeah.